Wowee, another 3D printer episode of Taptic Digital. All right, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. You use the same anime wow sound in the last like three videos. What, What is going on with you right now, man? I'm back here with my Ender 3 V2, and since my last video where I upgraded the extruder, it's been working great. But I want more. I want CR Touch automatic bed leveling, because I'm tired of leveling this bed every two prints. In the box, we get the CR Touch module, as well as various brackets to adapt it to different Ender series printers. But the really cool thing about this is the sound it makes. The box itself makes the same sound as the printer's digital input. Also in the box, we get three zip ties, the extra long interface cable. We also get two sets of screws. I'll be using the Ender 3 V2 bracket. This aligns perfectly with the holes cut to the left of your hot end. The CR Touch module aligns with the other two holes on the bracket. It's oriented so that you can only install it in one direction, so as not to cover the connector. I'll use the longer M38 screws to secure the module to the bracket before installation. The bracket can then be attached to the hot end plate using the two shorter M36 screws so that they don't grind against the gantry. Next I'll gently insert the rainbow ribbon into the CR Touch probe module. To ensure it doesn't tangle or snag during printing, it's a good idea to use the included zip ties to attach it to the hot end wires and the Bowden tube. Now it's time to remove the original Z-stop. This is the part that stops the gantry from lowering into the bed. The CR Touch module will act as our new Z-stop. The rainbow ribbon needs to be connected to the main board. I'll remove the single top screw hidden under the build plate just to the right of the information sticker. On the bottom, there are three more screws that secure the fan cover to the board. One of these screws is longer than the others and needs to be kept separate. Under that cover is a rat's nest of wires running to the main board. And yes, I know I need to clean this up. This is also a great time to make note of which board you're using, as you'll need to know it for the firmware update that we'll do in a bit. There are two variations for this board, the 4.2.2 and the 4.2.7. Mine is the 4.2.2. The rainbow ribbon needs to be connected to the board just below the H symbol in the unused connector. How you route this wire is up to you, but I'll be running it through the back by the other power wires, and I'll use this small hole to zip tie the cables together. Next I'll reinstall the board cover. You'll just have to trust that I cleaned up that wiring. Using the micro SD card, I'll connect it to a computer and format the card with the default settings. Navigating to Creality's website and going to the downloads page, then to Ecosystem, which was formerly the accessories page, I'll download the appropriate firmware for the Sierra Touch module. Unzipping the file will give you options for both the 4.2.2 board and the 4.2.7 board. Copy the appropriate one to the freshly formatted SD card. Next, I'll insert the SD card into the printer and power it on. The screen will light up, but stay blank for a few seconds longer than normal as the firmware is updated internally. Once fully booted, the screen will show a new option as well as new information at the bottom, assuming you're running the stock Marlin firmware. I'll spin over to the new level option and run the new auto leveling feature we just installed. The printer will run a fancy new auto homing sequence where the hot end will travel to the middle of the build plate and test its z-axis limit. From there, the printer will then sequentially test locations on the bed to create a digital mesh of the surface. It's a good idea to manually level your bed before and after running this, as the CR Touch is meant for fine tuning and can't fix a wildly out of level bed. Once that is complete, I'm going to the move menu and adjusting the z-offset. The CR Touch only checks that the hot end is a certain distance over the bed. It does not check that the nozzle is at the correct distance though, so this needs to be manually set. You'll also notice that in the new firmware, as you adjust the numbers, the gantry will move in real time. Using a slip of paper, you can get your adjusted Z offset number. You may have to run a few test prints to fine tune your Z offset, and this can be adjusted mid print as well. I'm also going to add a line to the G-code in my slicer software that tells the CR Touch to run auto leveling before each print. This only adds about 47 seconds of print time, but almost guarantees a perfect print every time. With everything said and done, you're ready to print and can expect a flawless first layer almost every single time. Thanks a ton for sticking around to the end of the video. If you made it this far, drop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going for 3,000 subscribers and I need your help to get there. I'll see you next time.